have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and welcome to another glorious episode. This is the month of October. We're recording on October 16, 2015, and it's going to be Animat's birthday month on Cinema Royale. We're going to celebrate yeah. his birthday by talking about Disney, but first, we're going to introduce you to my awesome film officiados. First up, as I said, is Matt Brene, also known as Animat. To all who come to this deranged podcast, welcome. Cinema Royale is your royale. Wait, does that sound right? No. No? Fudge. Dang, now that's... <laughs> I've practiced so many times on this. I picked the wrong one. Fudge, nabbit, I quit. Good, get out of here. <laughs> uh, next can't up. quit, you're fired. <laughs> you're fired. You can't fire me, I quit. You know, you know when Arnold becomes the host of uh, The Apprentice, you know what he's going to say? You're fired. <laughs> yes, yes. Why is that a thing? Why is Arnold freaking in The Apprentice? Because, they're, try because they're trying to get Donald into the presidential campaign. <laughs> Donald? Anyways, anyway. anyways next I'd up is... I'd go for that. <gasps> <laughs> oh, quack, I'll get into that. He's a quack, that's what he is. <laughs> Next up is James Sullivan, also known as the Jaime Dude. AKA guy who looks like he has lipstick in his uh, icon. What so the next project is brought to you by the Chibi Turn. Ah, look at me, I'm so cute. I'm so kawaii cute. Kawaii, Beppo. And me so kawaii. So so kawaii. What in this God's name is that? Whoa, 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 what's <laughs> That forehead, though. <laughs> That's a definite move. No, no, no! <laughs> Taking me back to fifth grade! <laughs> I feel like this is the Jaime Tude version of Sonic Dreams Collection. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing so Wait, hard. I got a text. Go for the kill. Oh, Can you God. Stare deep into Stare his eyes. Far. Oh my god. Oh, you've done. What's going on? Okay, and I'm done. Oh my god, I can't breathe. Just give me a second here. Um Chibi Tune will be right back after these messages. No he won't. No we won't. No we won't. Um so next up is a very good old friend of ours, uh Brandon Nichols, also known as a hardcore kid. How's it going, everybody? I'm the hardcore kid, the guy who was uh, originally the guy who was hardcore enough to review kids' stuff. Now I just upload BattleBots videos. <laughs> yes, that's true. And he he was, God, it was a long time ago. He he was last with us with James and I. We were talking about Sylvester Stallone films on episode eight, and it's our highest viewed Cinema Royal episode. It's higher than Nicolas Cage. It's higher than Nicolas Cage. I, I swear, for the longest time, Nicolas Cage was on top, and then all of a sudden, Sly just comes from behind and be like, I'm gonna kill you. You know, they're actually try they're actually doing a theater version of uh, Moonstruck in my town right now when they're doing auditions. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, what do you right? think? You think I could make a good Nicolas Cage? Huh? With this face, Maybe. you think I could be good? Maybe. Snap out of it. Uh, currently, it's at... 28,360 views. Wow. Wow. How many thumbs down? Nine. <laughs> <laughs> and thumbs uh, up is 19. <laughs> love <them>. Oh. <laughs> so there's a difference. I don't have any comments on it, though, but it's the highest view. And I was like, damn, I guess Brandon brings in the views. <laughs> and lastly, our new co-host of the podcast, a fan of film as well as animat. Amelia Ray, also known as Mia. Hi. How do I introduce myself? Um, I'm a bunny. Uh, I, I like to draw. I'm afraid of everything. And uh, I may or may not be head over heels for Matt. So... <laughs> yeah, I... Hi. Nice to meet you all. Hello. Certainly the fan Welcome girl. abroad. Yep. She's, she's brand new. She's her debut episode, so... 
Uh, anyways, like I said, we're going to talk about Disney, and first up, we're going to talk about Disney animated films, that is, and uh, we got Matt, he's an expert in it, so I've got a couple of set topics to talk about, we just casually talk about it, you know, not, nothing formal, nothing like anybody has a movie, it's just going to be kind of casual, so I uh, figured... So it's going to be Disney films in general. Animated general, anim animated at this, yeah, so... So we shall start with. So let's start off with um. Hand drawn CGI puppets or clay. Yes. If you got a good story, you'll be making Matt day. <laughs> what is that face? I stick my tongue out. I don't know. Is oh, that, I can see cheeky? the light. <laughs> That's so bright on us. Oh, he's calling. I mean, I'm kind of delaying. It's weird. Um, so first off, we're gonna talk about what is our, what was the first Disney film we saw? What was the first mm. one we saw? Our memories of it? Mm. It's actually a really good question to think about. Uh, so animated or live action? Animated. No, we're this, good. Okay. The whole thing is animated. The whole thing's animated. Next time is live action. Okay. So our first animated Disney movie is the keyword, and let's start off with the animated expert himself, Animat. Oh boy, if we're going to go far back, that could be a tricky one, but I'm going to go with either Alice in Wonderland or The Three Caballeros. Those are the two that I remember the most as a kid, and those, like, at least one of them has got to be my first. Alice in Wonderland, I got to say, is the one that really gained my interest in, like, the story of Lewis Carroll and stuff like that. Like, it, it, it wasn't until much later in my years that I discovered that I have this fondness for Alice in Wonderland and for the story, and especially for the characters, considering how uh, Alice in Wonderland, the, the biggest strength of the 1951 Disney movie is the characters. Like, they're all, like, they, it doesn't have a story to, to work with, so they have to put all their strengths into making such memorable characters to how weird they can be and how over the top and, like, just how lovable they are. Like from the Cheshire Cat, the Mad Hatter, March Hare, Alice herself, uh, like the Dodo, the Queen of Hearts, uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, and all, all the White Rabbit, like, and all these characters. And considering how the simple, like, it really is more, I, I, I recall how it's more appealing to me as a kid with its more, like, at least with all the other characters, it has a more simplistic style in Wonderland, and it is a very, very colorful film. So definitely, the anim the imagination is definitely out there, and um, just the artistry is just very wonderful, especially from the direction of Mary Blair. Like I, I believe this was the animated feature that really got like that Mary Blair really put into her work kind of like how she did like how her work was heavily influenced in into small world and then you got the three caballeros which basically was that's one of the packaged films of the night of the 1940s like during like that was it was the response it was the result or at least one of the results when Walt and a small bit of his group they went to South America for a goodwill trip. It was basically, it, it was in a way, it's kind of like an educational piece to learn about Mexico and stuff like that. And you learn a bit about the other countries, like you learn a bit of Brazil, mostly because it was Donald's birth. Like the main plot itself is that it was Donald's birthday and he was getting these gifts. And then one of which he saw a film reel of a penguin who wants to go to the South because it's too freaking cold. I can relate to that. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then there was, um, and then there was from Jose Carioca, which he briefly takes him to Bahia. Have you heard of Bahia, Donald? No? Well, let's go. No, let's go. <laughs> if uh, you go to Bahia, my friend, you uh, never return. return. Yes. <laughs> Great. Um, and then finally, the, the fun doesn't fully begin in the movie until Pachitos Pistoles comes in. And that's when, like, the infamous song, like, We're three caballeros, three gay caballeros, they sing with the birds and the feather. Like, it definitely does have this major influence of uh, South America. Like, you do learn a bit of how it goes. And even the technology, like, wh wh how, how far they went with the animation is actually really quite impressive. And not just in the... Not just with what they normally do 
with a lot of the weird segments, but also the the mixture of live action and animation, especially when Donald Duck was chasing all the girls and stuff like that. That it was quite impressive. I think this... uh, that was like the funniest. Oh I, yeah, I remember back in the day that was some of the funniest parts of this was just Donald <laughs> tripping over <laughs> girls. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> it was is, one is of those Daisy moments. watching this movie? Is, is Daisy watching this? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was wondering. Is Daisy, 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 Daisy or something? some choice booty? You guys are the bangers! They use a they use a flying carpet to chase women on the on the beach. <laughs> Stalking oh, yeah. them from the air. Yeah, oh, an yeah. airborne assault. <laughs> In fact, like thinking about it now, Don like Donald and Three Caballeros was a horny little bucker. Yeah. Like, he wasn't just chasing girls during that time. Like, he, like even when he went to Bahia, like there was this one chick he wanted to impress, and he had to go through all these guys. Uh huh. And even at the end, like during the trippy segment, like um, what was that song? It's like you belong, belong to uh, my heart. Uh, it's, uh, and that one, like, like he would fantasize about this woman. So it's like, Donald Duck like has had this major womanizing issue. That, that's why I like him so much. Yeah, the pre Dixie days. Yeah, makes you wonder how yeah. cartoon sex is supposed to work. Yeah, three caballeros is kind of a probably the same way uh, duck sex works. Come on. <laughs> Well, duck sex? You mean well, the ones with the drills? Yeah, it's, it's, it's... <laughs> yeah I was going to say. Haven't you, haven't, haven't you seen Howard the Duck? I haven't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. I, I take it. I probably should watch this film. Nope. No. Ask Morgan, it's actually. It's a classic. Okay. But, uh, Anyways, James, go on. Yeah, I think... Um, I, I think that the uh, Three Caballeros is interesting in that um, in, in that it, it starts out so tame and and so and so plain and so educational, and then as as soon as the other characters, for me at least, as soon as the other characters come in, that's when things start going crazy and oh yeah the cl the climax, my goodness. Um, it, it's like they were trying to outdo the pink elephants routine from Dumbo. Mm, um, I think I've seen, um, sorry, I think I've seen a little bit of that. The, the animation is absolutely gorgeous. Like, you can see mm -hmm. how fast it moves. It's, I just love it. Oh, I mean, they, they, they got, they got this, like, this medley of tunes. It, it's switching... It's switching very rapidly between the song "You Belong to My Heart" and then they go, they zip back into the three caballeros. They zip back into three pa caballeros like a double. Oh yeah, with the three, with like the, the three main characters with the women legs. <laughs> Sound like Rob Paulson right there. <laughs> oh well, thank you, Doc. Yeah. Any other people that I saw? There's a part where I think, uh, uh, what's that one guy's name? The red guy? What was his name? Pachitos. Pachito. He, he says, uh, he, he's popping up at one point and he says, Some fun, eh, kid? Some fun, eh, kid? Uh, and, and there's a part where two two of those heads pop up at once and they're like, Some fun, eh, kid? And I'm, I was watching that as a kid and I, I always thought, is he saying someone naked? <laughs> someone naked? Someone so naked? Much. Someone <laughs> naked? Oh my god. I would uh, get... <laughs> be Donald. Yeah. He yeah, would have his head. He <laughs> would be a lady in the Someone naked? Someone naked? Someone naked? Yeah, my god. I can relate. Oh boy. <laughs> Don't we all. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Matt, who do you like to hear next? Uh, oh, why not? Mia! Yay! Um, okay, wow. I, like anybody else, I totally grew up with Disney. Um, obviously my mom 
and dad and I used to watch films like that a lot. But um, I can't really pinpoint one. I can remember a lot of moments in my childhood where like something else happened besides the Disney movie. Like I got hurt really badly on a slide and my mom took me in and no, that was SpongeBob. <laughs> um, the first time I cried over a movie was The Lion King and like you know, stuff like that. Like a bunch of um, um, other, like just big events that I associated with the Disney movie I was watching at the time. But if I had to pick one that I remember really far back that's kind of significant to me, I'd have to say it was a collection of, like, Goofy shorts. Starring Goofy. I think it's called that. Starring Goofy. Oh, all those VHSs. Does, does that count? Yes, I'll allow counts. it. I'll allow okay, it. Okay, it will. Okay, I'm so sorry. It's um, fine. It's anything Disney animated, so it counts. Really? I can I fix it now. Know. Oh God, no, it's I fine. Think I used to rent those DVDs. You know what? It's no, it's fine. I kind if of you... have another one. If you want, go mm -hmm. ahead. Okay. Um, the other one I would say is The Lion King. I guess I'll pick that one because I do remember that one too. Um, yeah, I do remember that one. I used to watch it in daycare. <laughs> we used to watch it in daycare. Um, what's funny is that movies like that were a little in tense for me surprisingly because like the climax at the end when they were um fighting i don't remember it very well because i have not seen it in a very long time but um who was it mufasa no right no, simba simba and, simba simba. and scar oh my god simba, simba, scar. simba and yep. scar were like fighting mm -hmm. and um it was really intense because there was like a lot of violence a lot of you know um, fire yeah, lots and lots of fire. That's what I remembered. And that really, really stuck with me. Because it made me really, really tense. And, yeah. Um, but I did enjoy it. Like, I did enjoy the scenes. Like, um, Akuna Matata, of course. Mm -hmm. yes. I love that. Yep. Um, I used to love that. Uh, all the songs. They were really fun. But, yeah, I guess I was a little too young to remember. <laughs> That was really, really fun. Yeah, the, yeah, the Lion King for me, that was, there was a, there was a whole craze centered around that, and oh yeah, uh, personally, I was in that craze. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was, I had a, a very odd, strange, delayed reaction to it, and I think, uh, I think that, um, that's because you know the film was what it was and it was a great movie mm -hmm. but i think my obsession with it kicked in when i when i started to realize the internet was becoming a thing late 90s and um and there were so many fan sites dedicated to it and so much information oh, out yeah. there about it mm -hmm. showing off stuff that you saw on the laser disc that um that you wouldn't oh, yeah, see laser discs yeah well, those those really big DVD things, yeah. you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they're they're like a proto type DVD. Mm -hmm. Stick a mm -hmm. huge movie it, on one giant disc. They're uh, they were that uh, they were that sacred object people were looking for on the on the regular show. Remember, Mike? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's really... yeah. Wow, Woody. Yeah, Lion King, for me, was a huge thing. I I was obsessed with it. I was like, I was one of those kids who, like, wanted to get every memorabilia of Lion King. Like, <laughs> I remember, I have it on videotape, a whole movie of it. Uh, for my birthday, my mom and dad got me the, um, uh, what was it? It was a PC game of the Lion King. I <laughs> opened it. I opened it up and I went nuts. I was like. <laughs> I just went nuts because I loved it so much. I, I, there's even footage of me playing the game on the PC, and I had, I had my whole family involved. It's like, let's let's play the game together. It was like, a, <laughs> I'm so excited. Dude, <laughs> it was like, mm -hmm. it was it was a game where it was a bunch of mini games. So there was like a, I remember a mini game where you have to pounce. Like there was a 
Simba as, as a cub has to pounce him like on a butterfly or something. And he had to crouch the button so qu quietly with the mouse. And it's just like... Oh, fun, fun memories. I, rem I remember those interactive games. I only had the Winnie the Pooh one. I really, I want, I I really wanted Winnie to Pooh get one. the Lion King one, but I was never able to get it. Yeah, that's the one. That was, yeah, that's the interactive one. Yeah, because I had the Winnie the Pooh one as well. Uh, I, but, ha I had the uh, interactive storybook for, for Toy Story. I think I had that one too, actually. I was a PC oh, gamer was... as a kid. Um, hey, but, same here. But the, uh, mm -hmm. the death of Mufasa just killed me the most. It was like, mm -hmm. so ballsy. Oh, yeah. It was like, oh my god. I cried. I was like, no, not Mufasa. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, it kills me. It kills me more now than it did then. Am I am I um, heartless for saying that? No, uh, not really. Nah. No, no it's... kids don't understand. It's mm -hmm. it's yeah. Just the Lion King for me is like one of my favorite Disney films. On top. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking back on it now, I can obviously appreciate it much more than being scared of all the fire. But, uh, yeah. Um, I'd say. Yeah. Um. It was, it is really, really, really good, obviously. Um, beautifully made and all that. Mm -hmm. I love that it's based off of Hamlet. I think that's really sort of loosely yeah. based on I think well, that's really fascinating for some reason. Yeah. Well, well, really, that, you, you don't really well, it's up inspired things, by like, anime. For yeah. most kids, Lion King was what introduced them to Hamlet. The yeah, the Shakespeare, yeah. That's yeah. what I was, that's, that's how I got into Shakespeare, through the Lion King. It was like, holy or crap, it was based on Hamlet. Or if, if you need, if you really need to go into discussion, then I recommend watching the Brows Held High episode of The Lion King, that goes into like yeah, yeah, there really is like where that's the good... origin came from of the yep. Lion King stuff like that. Yeah, that's a good episode. Um, yeah, don't mention the Kimbo the White Lion. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? What's that Japanese anime? What? What is that? <laughs> Have you ever um, heard of Kimba? Good. Yeah. And Disney did their job. <laughs> Go yeah. on. All right, uh, Mia. Who do you want to pick next? Who do I want to pick? Uh, I want to hear from. Oh, are you shy? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No, I know not. that feel. I know that feel. Um, I think I'll pick Mike. Oh, Mia. Okay, cool. Uh. I think I was thinking about this as you guys were talking about the, my first Disney film I remember watching was The Jungle Book. <gasps> I was gonna say that before, but <laughs> yeah, it was. I want to be like you. It was. It's one of those films I remember watching as a kid, and I used to sing along to the songs, and the story was really good. I never read the book though; it was based off of, even though it was loosely based on it. But. Um, when. Mm. It it was just, I love Baloo. Baloo was the best. Baloo was amazing. And then, and then I remember those v vultures who were like the Beatles. Yes. <laughs> I was like, what is this movie? But it, there's an interesting story there. I think um, when they, uh, when they introduced those characters, yes, they had um, the hair They and had all the Beatles that. in mind. You know the whole. Uh -huh. British invasion and whatnot, and the song that they sing in its earlier stages was actually a lot more was actually a lot more rock and rollish. Yeah, they are. It was yes, a lot of 50s rock. They they wanted to make it like they really wanted to go all out with the Beatles thing. They even wanted the Beatles to actually voice the vultures, but unfortunately, um, due to scheduling and stuff like that, they couldn't. And also, like, they wanted to do, like, a Beatles-style song. But I think, I, yeah, I think it was Walt Disney that intervened and was like, well, that's going to make the movie a little dated. Can you make it a little more timeless with uh, a barbershop quartet? So that's basically where, what happened with, that's what Friends are for. Yeah, because be barbershop quartet aren't uh, dated at all. Like, it is a safe, like, it definitely was a safe bet to do. I mean... Uh -huh. Either oh, yeah. way, it wouldn't have like it would have still been timeless either way. But then again, like I don't think Walt or anybody would have guessed like the the legacy that the Beatles would have. Yeah, I just thought that was like interesting. I was like, well, at the time, I didn't know what the Beatles were, but I, I eventually, when I grew up, I was like, 
wait, they look like the Beatles. Like, what the? But I was just like, I, I uh, recently got like the DVD of Jungle Book and I rewatched it with my uh, niece, and it was a good time watching it, revisiting it. And it was like, <sighs> good times, good times. Also, can I can I, I just know. add? What do you I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do, <laughs> do, want to do again? <laughs> oh, not this again. I'm going to go say, what do you want to do? And then you're going to ask, what do you want to do? And then we're going to do that same pose thing again. <laughs> what do you want to do? Go on, Matt. So, there's something that I want to mention about the Jungle Book. I think there was something very interesting that I discovered, and it's totally messed up. And it's about, I want to be like you. There was at one point, like, I was in a, a VHS, I was, I, I was, like, in a DVD store, and I found, like, on the CD section, it's a collection of Disney villain songs, and one of which being, I want to be like you, and I was there, like, why is this in there? This is not a villain song at all. It's, like, it's too upbeat, and it's too fun, and there's no sign of evil. And then I really thought about it, and then I was there, like, wait, oh, God, oh, God! Oh God! Because what you really think about it? Because the one thing that you don't ever think about, I want to be like you, is King Louis' intentions. Because really think about it, okay? Because he wants, okay? Because the song basically says that King Louis wants to be like with the people. He wants to go to the man village and like you know try to blend in with the whole crowd. Why is it that afterwards he wants to know how to make fire? <gasps> Exactly. Your thing with me, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh my. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what I realized that dark agenda. I was like, uh huh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I can I later I did realize that later on. I was like, yeah, he was the bad guy in the in the do film. You think, oh, no, no, that would do be sure. Maybe he's, he's an artist. Yeah. yeah, something like that. You think um, maybe I think... he... There was like, you, you know that. Maybe... Oh my god, kill me. <laughs> you, go. Okay, you know that, like that live action Disney, the Jungle Book that's coming out? Yeah. The live uh -huh. action Jungle Stop. Book? Okay, I think I was watching Matt's Patreon vlog and it was like, um, he was watching it at the end, the trailer. Yeah. Didn't you say something about like there was more of like a villain role with King Louis? No, 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 he seemed, like, very suspicious. Like, he seemed... Okay. Because, like, they, they take the tone very seriously, and then you just see, like, I King see. on the side, it's like... Yeah, he's big. <laughs> he's big. He's huge. Yeah, kind of. Big oh, no, 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 it's huge. Be Christopher Walken, so it's like, I'm sorry, but this is my mouth <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, so it's gold right now. I can see through your disguise. Those aren't hot lips. Those are just two coconuts together. <laughs> I can't wait to see the live action version. I'm gonna see oh, yeah. how John Favreau does it. Actually it actually looks interesting. It does. I, that's and why I kind of turns uh -huh. around and he threatens a fire extinguisher. <laughs> be yeah, an interesting so... film. Um, but then, um, but yeah. Then, like... So you guys are saying basically with your interpretation of the song that maybe King Louis is an arsonist and in. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. But then I. I... Hey, he needs to conquer more lands. He's the king. Yeah. Hail to the no, king, baby. baby. I'm the king. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the Jungle Book love grew even further when I discovered Tailspin. Tailspin. I got the complete set. I got the complete set of Tailspin. It's still perfect. Yeah. It still perplexes me. How do you go from a Rudyard Kipling story and then you go into airplanes? I know, right? I know, I know right? Like... I was like, oh yeah, like I couldn't even tell that it was based on the Jungle Book. Like I've only, I've never actually seen it. I've only seen the nostalgia critic talk about it, and I was like, wait, this is based off the Jungle Book? Like these yeah. are characters from the Jungle the Book? I was like, what? It was a spin off. I was like, oh my god. It was like they took Baloo, they took King Louis, Shere Khan. Yeah, they turned. Sh that was the weirdest one. How Shere Khan was turned into like this full-on businessman. It was like, yep. What? <laughs> oh man, that was just. God, I love because, that movie you know, so much. Those corporate fat cats are evil, man. You know. <laughs> by the way, I know. By the way, I know that actually Captain Hook makes a cameo, but I do have a question. 
Do any of the other characters from the Jungle Book make a cameo? Like, is there a cameo from, like, Ka or Bagheera or the Bage Vultures? Well, well, the Bagheera, there's, like, this, there's like a couple of generic, like, Black Panther characters. I don't know if they model after Bagheera, but he isn't, he's not, like, a full-on character. Okay. Uh, Ka, you don't see, you don't see Ka or anything like that. The Vulture's not even in it either. Okay. No, it's, just, it's just it's just the main blue mm -hmm. Shere Khan and King Louis. It's just those three, and right. they added new characters around it. Yeah. Which I thought mm. was pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, I love love it, love it. I can't wait for the the new Disney live action one. So I guess that leaves me, huh? Um. Uh, well, we still technically have James and you. So hold on. <laughs> Yeah, hold, hold right. your well, hold your horses. I'll let you go then, Brandon. What what do you got? Well, um, I got a few things to say. Um, I grew up with Disney. In fact, uh, we didn't. two 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 movies. Uh, the first two movies that I ever watched on VHS were Peter Pan and Aladdin. Uh, and yes. Both uh, like uh, very uh, good stuff. It's like. They kind of sort of have very similar plots, like you have a main protagonist and you've got a girl and um, basically they're trying to stop this evildoer. It's basically the Disney formula. And um, music. And music as well. I kind of like Aladdin a little more though because... Oh, yeah. Yes, I, I think uh, like Peter Pan's a fun movie. You got like the Lost Boys and... You got you got the occasional songs and you got some pretty funny action scenes, particularly with the uh, with the croc. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, um, but uh, Aladdin, uh, I I really enjoy. It's like one of my favorite Disney movies. Um, it's got a lot of great songs. Uh, I think my favorite song has to be the Ali Ababwa song by the late great Robin Williams. That one's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, that is. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course that. Funny story. Really? I knew a guy. Go, go on. Really, um, really that, that that movie is like most famous for a whole new world, which mm -hmm. uh, really got popular. Then you also Friend got like me. me. Speaking, speaking, yeah. of, and uh, and as well as uh, those two movies um, being the first ones I've seen. Believe it or not, the first ever movie that I ever watched in a movie theater was um, Pocahontas, which was okay. Oh. And yeah. uh, mm. and, the, and then right after that, we saw Batman Forever. <laughs> ah. Like, Pocahontas is kind of boring. Like, it, it's, it's it, good. It, it, it's it's good, of... but it's like, it's kind of very, like, low-key. And, and Aladdin's a lot more fun, and Peter Pan's a lot more fun. And... Like they, they folk, like to be like to be honest with Pocahontas, they focused a lot less on making like what they usually do with their movies, and focus more on trying to make something that would be that would try to win Best Picture, because that would yeah. like, they got they got a little too cocky with the nomination with Beauty and the Beast. Ah, I say they did, they didn't get cocky enough. <laughs> I think uh, I think out of that group, you know, Aladdin, Lion King, that was pretty much like the height, and then oh yeah, after that they they could not. They slowly but surely went down. It, well, it was they were it, still uh, good after that, but they they still you know they, mm -hmm. they couldn't. Uh, wasn't wasn't uh, grandmother Willow in like CGI? I don't know. I don't. It think looked so. CGI. I thought it did. Mm. Maybe maybe it's just like the way they. The way she was like the the colors probably maybe probably. it's just like because, because they use a lot of shadows this, on her. This was around when they started uh, making uh, CGI stuff like with Toy Story. Uh huh. Yeah. 1995. Mm -hmm. It it was weird because Pocahontas was like done by a team of yeah. animators, and then The Lion King was the B team of animators, and it's weird how those two got like flip flopped around. Like the B team succeeded more than the A team. I'll always remember, like, um, there was a quote in uh, Waking Sleep, documentary, Waking Sleeping Beauty, and, like, they were talking about when they were making The Lion King, and, like, they, they were having trouble with it, so they were asking, like, so, how's the movie about the, so, how's The Lion King going? Oh, it's going great! We're making a movie about ourselves. <laughs> it was cute. 
Was yeah, I, I enjoyed The Lion King too. Like, I have a few V8. I still have a few VHS tapes down there, like Aladdin and uh, uh, Peter Pan and um, Lion King down there. Really funny story. I, I still have the uh, Peter Pan VHS, but when I was little, I like took the uh, cover of the VHS. Oh god! And it, and somehow I ended up uh, completely wrecking it. So now it's just it's a blank. It's just a blank VHS cover, but with, um, uh, or not Peter Pan, Aladdin, and it's just a blank VHS cover with Aladdin scribbled on it, as well as, like, my, my failed attempts at, uh, trying to draw, replicate what was on the actual VHS cover. Kind of suspicious. Blasphemy. Oh, God. Really that funny. was before printer technology was perfected. Yeah, if I could, if I, uh, if I could, uh, go back right now or if I still had that plastic or, or I could just uh, or I could just tape uh, a picture of the uh, cover from Wikipedia right onto the front of the thing get me to draw it I'm not a good drawer at all so. well, how do you like that there is no uh, VHS picture for the Aladdin Wikipedia page in fact there isn't one for any of them no Pocahontas I'm sure if you look deep enough, copy on VHS. You can probably look really deep to find it. I know what it looks like. No, none for Hunchback. I don't know what the heck's going on here. Damn you people. So, I guess James is the only one left to talk about his... Oh, oh this is the simple Wikipedia page. You bastards. How the heck did I end up on that? Can't trust fucking Wikipedia. <laughs> You need to learn how to use it right. You gotta learn to you're, trust it. You're wrong! You're doing it wrong! Uh, but yeah, a lot of the uh, early 90s uh, Disney films that I grew up with, those are some of my favorites. And I really enjoy mm -hmm. them. I haven't I haven't seen uh, any of many of the sequels. Like I've seen uh, the, the two Aladdin sequels. They're okay. I have two. Yeah, they're okay. I, I saw, I saw... Okay, that was on your list, wasn't it? King yes. Yeah. yeah that, that was on my and, best um, sequels list. I watched Lion King 2, and while I admire it trying to do another Shakespeare thing, yeah, this Romeo being Juliet. Romeo and Juliet, I didn't like it all that much. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, okay. I didn't like the characters, I didn't like, uh, much of the story, but... Eh, yeah. What can you do? I, I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the Lion Guard somewhat. Oh yeah, that looks then, good. Then, then that should be fun. Yeah, isn't that's. The Lion Guard, like, okay, there's gonna be the movie, but it, afterwards, isn't it gonna be like a Disney yep. Junior, yeah, you know, yep. children's program? Yep. It's gonna be mm -hmm. something. Yeah. I think that's cool because, um, suffice to say, I think um, uh, the uh, kid line, uh, Simba was actually actually had kind of a personality, but once he grew up into uh, Matthew Broderick Simba, he, he got boring. <laughs> <laughs> We here at Cinema Royale do tease on Matthew Bach very much. <laughs> we don't like Sorry, his acting. Case in, case in point, the producer's episode. Oh, yes. God. yes. No, no, no. no it was I, I love that movie. Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks episode. Oh, my God. That was classic. I, ne I never saw the play, but the movie's awesome. Yeah. I saw all three so... plays. So, James... Yeah. What was your first Disney movie? Animated. Well, um, first, the first one that I can remember, uh, should, I should say regularly, uh, was, let's see, around three or four. I was, I was watching, I was watching Cinderella. Hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Nice. I. I I uh, I thought that one was quite enjoyable. I I never. Um, I I guess I guess probably because you know the folks bought it and they they thought it was they thought it was good and I thought it was good. Um, I got no complaints with it. Um. But um, I I think that um, out of all the, out of all the the princess stories that they have. This one I admire in hindsight because it's the least princess-like. Cinderella? 
<laughs> You're mad. Although, to be fair, um, no. C Cinderella didn't start out as a princess. Yeah. She was a uh, an overworked that's maid. My, that's my point. That's my point. Yeah. Um. So she be she becomes a princess in the end as her reward for working hard and and getting this far. Yeah. In a in a way. That's good. Yeah, I'll admit, like it is cute. I remember seeing it recently to do research for the 2015 Cinderella live action reboot. Like it's <laughs> cute. Like it, it's something that like it it has a very childlike tone, but you cannot hate it, especially. Like the animation is gorgeous, and like it has its it has like that simple Disney charm. Like when they like when they began with the formula, and plus the fact that it was the second time that Disney came back. Like Disney came back to the to the formula that that worked very well with Snow White, and, and plus the fact the fact that like if you know your Disney history, you'll forever have a true appreciation for Cinderella, considering that was the movie that saved the entire company. Uh, what when um, they were pretty much in their when it, they were in their low point in, in World War Two after their first um, like Dark Ages, mm -hmm. they took a huge risk on it, and it ended up being a great success, and it helped grew the company to what it was. Mm hmm and I think the mice really yeah. Cinderella, Cinderella, Cinderella. I don't I hesitate. <laughs> oh, that song. Before there were the chipmunks I'm just there wondering was those how they <laughs> I'm just wondering how they oh, oh yeah. And they were and and they were far less annoying too. <laughs> but um Cause they were, yeah, they were. Jacques and Gus were, were used. I, I think the as, as perfect of an amount as as you could in the film. You know, they didn't, they didn't overdo their parts. They didn't over. They're welcome. Um, oh yeah. They, it's a, a, a sort of comic foil Abbott and Costello yeah. for uh, for the film. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. I actually have nice to think film. this much and. and Mm hmm I say I say about and Costello not because uh oh their personalities oh, but one one yeah. thin and one fat you know or you mean more Laurel and Hardy yeah kind of am I cutting out a there bit. was there was the occasional cut out there was a hiccup <laughs> it was okay yeah comic foils back then they used to be like that one was back then in the day they had one thin guy and one fat guy that was the yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah. Usually they were like. I'm to say. Am I coming through? Am I coming through? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> You're doing By good. By the way, James, um, what, what do you think of the 2015 uh, Cinderella movie? If you saw it. I've heard. I've heard them I say it's just like a copy and paste. The last time of that the, I saw anything. I just heard it was like a copy and paste of the uh, cart of the cartoon movie animated. Uh, it really, not really. Like, I don't know if I'm going to say this, but it really has, like, a special place in my heart because the visuals really stood out to me because I'm a very visual person. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's big budget. The visuals are gorgeous. Like, holy cow. Like, like when you see the ballroom, like, you can tell, like, that it's a really, it's a ballroom. Like, it's a really, really big. Which beautiful. one, the 2015 or the 2015. 19th? Oh, Okay, that's what I'm talking about, the live action. So, it is very cut and paste. Um, it's, it's good, but yeah. it does, like, the problem is that it doesn't stand out from, like, any other exactly. Cinderella movie. Yeah. Like, um, there are some differences, like, you see the prints more. Um, some of the visuals are different. There's, like, you know. Uh, yeah, but is that enough to really. No. Nope. Like, yeah, exactly. I remember, like, people on the YouTube comments, they would tell me that. It's like, well, there is a major difference. We see the prints a lot more. It's like, yeah, but is that really enough? Exactly. 
Uh, I just remember because nice I, I ate some delicious wings that night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think um, I, I think the last time I saw anything that vaguely uh, uh, that vaguely touched on the legacy of Cinderella was actually um, episodes of once the show. And well, what's it, it was kind of actually funny because um, once upon a time, and if memory receives me correctly, the second episode of the second season, uh, they uh, they introduce really briefly human Gus, or or a character comes on and says yes and. In the fairy tale world, my name is Gus, and I used to be a mouse and live in Cinderella's castle. Hi, my name is Gus. I get the. He's talking a little. He's talking to Red. Hmm. Actually, hmm. he's a very he's a very handsome looking guy in this. Uh, yeah, he's a very he's, he goes, he's a pretty uh, boy, huh? He, yeah. he goes up I'd like to, to see this. Prince Pretty. I would, I would like to see, I would like to see, like, this hot guy, but he I still like, has that voice from, like, the, I'd like to uh, see this. Like, from the 1950s show. <laughs> no, from the 1950 movie, it's like, you see this hot guy? My name is Gus, and, uh, in the fame tale, uh, I used to be a mouse. <laughs> sound like Homestar Runner there. Happy birthday! Uh, hey, yo. And... And uh, when and the next time you see him, though, the next time you see him, he's a dead body behind the behind the rest, and the rest of the effort trying to figure out who killed him. And it looks like uh, it was a little Red Riding Hood. Huh. And this uh, show turns into a werewolf. And I'm thinking to myself this whole time, they killed Gus. Oh my god, they, they killed, killed Gus. Gus. They killed Gus. They killed Gus. They killed Gus. Gus. They killed Gus. They killed Gus. Oh no. No Gus, Gus. No Gus, Gus. <laughs> it wasn't Lucifer this time. Da damn you, Lucifer! Ah. <laughs> uh. All right, mate. So I, I got guess it. officially special. over a Disney film I was going to save was... You good there? Okay. <laughs> you good? Yeah, he's having a bit of truck connection or something. Uh, live! Live! Cutting out, cutting out a lot. I noticed. Which is... Okay. Dark hey, guys. <laughs> it's... It's like... You're kind of frozen right now on my end. Uh, sort of. Yeah, his web your webcam's a little funky. It's like it's yeah, sixteen bit, eight bit. It's, <laughs> it's like blurry. Four, four and a half bit. It's sixteen p. Sixteen p. We meet again. <laughs> uh, it's weird. It's it's the only webcam that's actually looking like that really web, bad. Like, you pee sixteen times. Jeez, <laughs> pee sixteen times. <laughs> Well, maybe the color of your wall, but... <laughs> yeah, what's going on in that wall? Maybe I can see what pictures you got back there. No, it's still fuzzy hey. as hell. Let's see. Right. Nope, can't see a thing. Oh, boy. It's one of those... It's one of those days. Um, so... Let's, uh, just briefly, just... If you guys have any... Do you guys have any good childhood Disney memories? Okay. Um... Oh, I don't... The anime does this 2013, this 2012 count. <laughs> when I went, to, I actually went I to uh, Orlando, Florida, for uh, my uh, neighbors have a timeshare down there. So, uh, um, yeah, and uh, so we uh, went to a whole bunch of places like Universal, Epcot, Sea World, Disney World. Thank you. It was fun. It, they, they were all fun. We we got to see like. Um, we got to see the big castle. We got to go on all the rides. 
We we went on the It's a Small World ride. It's every bit as horrifying as they say it is. It is <laughs> ten. It is ten. <laughs> it is ten minutes of the It's a Song World looping over it's, and over again like with different it's variations. Like, I like, in, it's like it's it, it's small world. Indian areas and all, all sorts of crazy stuff. There was also the Peter Pan ride, which is like yeah. you're basically on a. Uh, like this thing har still harness thing, and you're flying over a set that has like London all lit up, and it's really cool. It still perplexes me how that ride ends up getting like so many, like the lineups are like always an hour long. It's and it's like this, like the dark ride, and it still has that same technology since 1955. It's like what the fridge. Well, we got lucky. Uh, my neighbor also gave us a uh, quick pass card, so we just could just. Oh, Zoom right past the lines. <laughs> okay, when I went, even with the quick pass, it was a fairly long wait, longer than I'm used to. <laughs> yeah. I think the longest yeah, I was up in line was maybe 10 minutes or something. Oh, really? Oh, man. I don't know. That was the shortest I was in line. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, it's fun. I, I, I would go back to Orlando and go back to Disney and Epcot and Universal and everything. I definitely want to go back to uh, Universal and check out the Harry Potter uh, land again, because now they just added oh, yeah. Diagon Alley. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, man. Don't you mean diagonally? <laughs> diagonally! <laughs> you want to fight? Oh, God, don't. Don't start anything. Unless it's good entertainment. Um, <laughs> I'm going to knock your face diagonally. Mortal Kombat Cinema Royale Edition. <laughs> <laughs> Mortal Kombat! Um, so... I'll go Johnny Cage. <laughs> so, Mia, what was some childhood memories okay. of Disney? This kind of ties into how, like, that the Lion King scared the crap out of me with, like, the climax. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's, like... I don't know if this is pleasant or not, but looking back on it now, it's actually really funny. <laughs> uh, when I was really young, I kind of had a bad record with Pixar movies because I do... Two come to mind... Was, there was one certain scene or very very small moment that really 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 scared me the one was with the dentist and he was like scraping out this guy's mouth and the guy was like ah like that oh, that's really finding really nemo. Yep. that's finding nemo and that yep. really really got me so i was like okay i'm never watching finding nemo when i was a kid the other oh. one was monsters inc they had like um they were like sort of like sanitizing the guy after he stepped in the sock and the one monster and um they like were and they like I think like he took up like a band-aid or something and ripped it off his back and he like screamed. I think it was something like that, and that really scared me too. So I don't know. It was something like that. Like anything with somebody screaming, that really, really got me back then. So I had like this mental like Oh, it could be like with uh, the or that orange guy that got contaminated. That one. That that was at the beginning. That was yeah. what got me. Uh -huh. And I had like this mental like blacklist of like okay these are movies I'm never watching because they scare me so much, and I was once like in like a shoe store or something or a kids clothing store and they were playing it on the TV, <laughs> and I was like oh not again and I ran, oh. and I was like I'm out of here and I was like hiding behind the curtain I was like is it over yet? <laughs> oh uh, well it's a little unrelated Mia but uh, <laughs> at, at some point maybe after the podcast James I think it's time you need to tell that story to me again. Oh yes, I was thinking about that actually. What story? Where did well, Sully get his name? Oh, I, I... I'll tell that story right now. Actually, right I don't now. Think I ever heard that. I, yeah, yeah, just, because, yeah, I think some... like everybody. Yeah, why don't I share the story with the, with the whole audience? Yes, yeah, just okay. go ahead. Okay, so here's the story. Back when I was uh, back when I was a wee little hymatude, um. <laughs> I I used to go I used to go to church uh, every Sunday with the family, and there was a fellow that that went to our church at uh, during that time. Uh, you might know him uh, by the name of Andrew Stanton. Ring a bell. No. Wait for it. Wait for what? Me? Come um, on. No, I'm sorry. I'm done. Um. Okay. So anyway, here's the point. Here's the point. Uh, he he comes up, and uh, he was actually teaching my Sunday school back when I was little. And 
during that during that time in the early '90s, he talked about, uh, oh, we're we're making this movie called Toy Story. You know, it's uh, it's going to be like nothing you've ever seen before. Oh, no, well. pictures of it. Uh-huh. And and so Toy Story comes out. It's a huge hit, and I'm the kid who's bugging him out who's bugging him all the time after that at church saying, can I be in one of your movies? Can I be in one of your movies? Can I be in your mo- one of your movies? And like, like he's a voice talent director, agent guy, you know, and I'm, I'm just a kid who doesn't really know any better. So high school comes along and uh, they make an announcement for Monsters Incorporated. And uh, they say John Goodman is playing James P. Sullivan. No way! That's insane! Oh my god! I have. Oh. Uh, I I don't want to I don't want to show my my full uh, ID here on my card, but uh, I'll I'll just uh, I'll I'll just cover up my I'll just cover up my address. For security reasons, but get focus. Uh, you don't want to get doxxed. Focus. James P. James no P. Way. James P. That is crazy. Oh my god. I am the original James P. Sullivan. <laughs> Bow down. Makes sense we are now. not worthy. Have you ever seen? Have you ever like caught up with Andrew ever since, or like? Um, no. The last time that I, uh, the last time that I ever actually saw him, he came back to church to plug a, a movie that he was directing at the time called Finding Nemo. Um, so that's, you can tell how long that's been. Yeah. Yeah, I can calculate. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but in any case, yeah, he, uh, he went on to do stuff, Wally, uh, John, John Carter, now he's working on Finding Dory, uh-huh. wish him the best. That's crazy, I did, yeah, that, wow. That, yeah, that blows your mind. Oh my god. It's a great story. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if I, if I have a moment. You, you may. Actually, I do have proof. He does. Oh it's yes, a, it's gonna be in a video form now. It wasn't picture form it. last time. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's another part of that story. Yeah, yeah. there is, and he got me a... pulling this out again. Yep. So. Oh, what what is that thing? Oh, <laughs> oh it's uh. Oh, it's the. It's, I remember the silver uh, Buzz Lightyear. I remember the they silver... had those in stores. He gave this to me. Wow. Oh. Oh, man. You know, it felt really funny when I, uh, when I, whenever I went to Toy Story, I always tried to look for the perfect Buzz Lightyear toy, and some toys have like him with, uh, with karate action, and some have him with the wings, but it's like some versions don't have him with the buttons, and it's like, I always want to find the one that is perfect from the movie, like a laser from on the arm, buttons on the chest, I think uh, I had that. wings, I think I and the karate had that. action. It's like. Can they really stick all that into one uh, action figure? Like they could. It, they could. <laughs> yeah. I think. I think they could now. It's just. Uh, yeah. The. They they manufacture this stuff cheap. Is the thing. Oh yeah. yeah. That's marketing. That's toys and. Blah, blah, blah. Well, they just said it's Toy Story. It's bound to have toys made of you know. Exactly. Marketing speaks for itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the helmet doesn't go sweet. No. Oh, that's a shame. No, nope. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> a- any other, any other childhood Disney memories? The only well, one I, I can think of is. Oh, I'm sorry. You go. You're the Disney no, 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 guy. You go. You go. You go. Okay. The only one I can think of is getting to ride on the rock and roller coaster for the first time in my entire life. Mm. That was amazing. And my dad I... bought this stupid picture, and I hate it. And he showed it to my grandparents, and I was like, no! I look so stupid at that. <laughs> oh, I hate those pictures. Yeah, yeah my, first, my first trip to 
um, to a Disney theme park was when I was eight. It was uh, a family trip to. It was a family trip to um, uh, Universal Studios one day, and the next day was Disneyland. And that was back when they had all the good stuff like Toontown. Oh yeah. Which mm-hmm. is being replaced by. Star Wars Land, which oh, could yeah. be good, but you know it's like. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're replacing Junior? Is it a? Fit? I thought they were. Yeah, they they're. I don't know if they've replaced it already, but it's. I think it, they're they're working on it now. Uh, which which was a trip because you know they they had this uh, ride where you you ride on Benny the Cab from. Uh, oh yeah, cartoons. Uh, oh. Yeah, who framed, framed Roger, Roger Rabbit. Rabbit. And it 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 wasn't exactly a thrilling ride or whatnot, but the one part that always that always uh, just sort of just made you think, how did they do that? There's a part near the end where where uh, Roger takes a Roger takes a, a cartoon hole and slaps it on the on the wall where the train tracks are in front of you and he says look i've got a hole i'll save you mm-hmm. and i'm just like did that did that just happen that did cartoon wall what what i'm going through the wall <laughs> i was a kid i didn't know any better oh yeah but the next time then the next time i went again evidence oh god more <laughs> evidence Gotta it. I got a hole. <laughs> 2003 took the trip down to Disney World with my grandparents. Uh, oh, that's uh, awesome. That's oh Pluto. Oh mm-hmm. that's Pluto's no not a planet. Get him out of there. <laughs> oh my god. It's kind of weird to see that. Just like you without the beard. Uh huh. It's the weirdest of young James. <laughs> mm hmm. It's weird. That's my Papa Tom right there, and there's uh, there's my grandma. Rest in peace. Uh, lovely memories, though. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, we went to Epcot. We went to oh. Epcot twice. And uh, that's, where, that's where I still have my, my figment. A uh, plushie from. Oh, where is it now? <gasps> it's in the garbage bag <laughs> in the closet. Oh, it in the trash. No, no, no. Imagination. Oh, at least he didn't throw it out. I guess yeah. it's something. Mm-hmm. Okay, well. Oh, mm-hmm. go on. It's just you know there there came a time where I was running out of room. Yeah. Right. I guess for me like holy crap I got too many to count especially I mean with my new like I I went to uh, Disney World several times and there was even at one point I went to Disneyland Paris that was awesome. <gasps> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like it, it, it's it, it's funny to mention about Disneyland Paris is because like the like the rides were great and like I. It, like even the Pirates of the Caribbean was really interesting, but it's kind of weird because everything is so close. Like you can, it's close to the point where you can actually touch the animatronics, and um, like everything is so like you can hear the mechanics everywhere. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Like, what are the, is it is it like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride in uh, in uh, Orlando, but except everyone's speaking French? No, no, no! It's like in Disneyland, but everybody, everything speaks in French. But I'm fine. Yeah. Like, I, I'm yeah. Like, I can just speak French. I so. love. I love to speak French. To so, be honest. Like even. I, in- I would. Uh, I would. I would uh, do uh, a French imitation, but unfortunately, I don't know any. And what in God's name is going on? Oh, Sorry. <laughs> That's too squeaky. I'm, I'm that was too before. squeaky. And like even individual rides, like there are a lot that I remember, like Crush Coaster at Disneyland. I did not expect it to be that much of a roller coaster. Like my first time in Splash Mountain, my first time in the Haunted Mansion when I had my first near death experience. Uh, what? <laughs> like, uh, but, I just so I remember. Oh, uh, please explain. How did you almost die? <laughs> no, I'd, I'd rather not. No. Come on, uh, come on. 
Oh, the slice is peaking. We need uh, we hey. need uh, a little more excitement. Let's hear about your near death experience. Oh my. Yeah, well, I'm I don't want to. I want to go to the one that I actually want to talk about. Damn it. Aww. No, I don't want to. All right. All right. Aww, all right anyway. Don't ask. He's like, don't. no. 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 <laughs> the only thing I'll say, beware the freaking attic. Uh, anyways, um, no, but the one ride I remember the most is uh, Muppet Vision 3D. It is where I got, where I truly got my love for the Muppets. And it is just so amazing. It's just like. I'll always remember Muppet Vision 3D. It's like the best 3D show. And it's still relevant to this day how it makes fun of like 3D and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Especially nowadays with like you get 3D at home and like 3D in theaters and stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. really amazing. 3D everywhere. Uh, Did someone no, but... say cheap 3D tricks? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I love... Yeah, so I got I a lot. Of... Oh, yeah. Like Splash Mountain, Pirates of the Caribbean. I, I got a lot of great things. But I think. That I've ever gotten. I think it was back in 2006 when I went to Disney World for the happiest celebration on earth. I think there was at one point I kind of looked up at the, I kind of looked up at Spaceship Earth. I kind of had a, a bit of an epiphany, is when it really hit me about Walt Disney and like everything he has done. It's like, holy shit! It's like, I just realized like, all of this is because of Walt. Disney. Like one guy had this dream and all that stuff and look what happened now so i kind of had this epiphany and that's where i got my obsession with di everything disney and stuff like that and everything kind of grew from there and that's how i and, that and then uh, and then some of it kind of uh winded down um, in the later years because it, it, now disney really isn't making that many like uh, classic uh, drawn animated films anymore. It's all like Pixar and CGI and whatnot. Because well, yeah, but that's just CG. But even at that, like, they're not really making much original things, unfortunately. But that's that's now left. That's only unfortunately left in the hands of Disney. Even if it's just CG, like we still get like these are pretty much contemporary classics now. Like mm -hmm. uh, like Tangled, Frozen, Wreck It Ralph. Mm -hmm. uh, Inside Out. Inside Out. I, 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 I saw, like, the first, like, five minutes of Frozen, but then we decided to watch a different movie. So. Yeah, good choice, honey. Good choice. Sure. <laughs> you guys are in the extreme minority, then. Okay. Uh, so, oh my God. all right. I just wanted to say this briefly. I'm the only person that has not been to Disney World or Disneyland. Oh. I've, actually never, I've never been to California, but I always want to go to Disneyland. I, I, went to, I went to California for Robo games, but that's it. Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, I'm going to go into the speed round here, kind of, because we don't have a lot of time left. Yeah, uh, we've so... been here like an hour and a half. I'm not we've tired. Got... Yeah, it's 1230. I need to take a nap. Shh. <laughs> There's like six minutes left. Shut up. <laughs> um, so let me... Uh, let's just get this... Uh, since we were just briefly going over that, what is the... Over, most overrated Disney movie and the most underrated Disney movie. <gasps> okay. Well, Frozen! Okay, Oh, is uh, The Little Mermaid because I just felt kind of bored watching it. I don't know if yeah. it's because I've, I I've like, uh, like basically sh Ariel is just a hoarder who collects <laughs> Um, all human stuff, and then it all gets destroyed, and then she decides to go, uh, she wishes for, for to get legs, and she trades her voice for it, and yada, yada, yada. Um, I don't. Okay, just saying, there's a video that I am going to send you relating to Ariel and the legs after that. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but it is amazing. <laughs> Right. Um, it's not okay. sexual, is it? Uh, a little bit? Send there's like me, this then. <laughs> <laughs> there's windows. There's, like, okay, ever, um, it's, it's a Tumblr, it's, it was a Tumblr post, and then somebody, like, oh, dubbed hell. over it, and, yeah, it was that. Oh, a Tumblr. <laughs> oh, Tumblr. After DashCon, there's no more, uh, taking Tumblr seriously. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I was there for... I wasn't there at Dashcom, but I was there when the thing happened, and... Yeah. Uh, Hilarious. Yeah. Um, alright, I guess I'll go now, though. 
Okay, underrated, hands down. Rescuers down under. Some underrated, some amazing. Hey, same. Yeah, same with me. Uh, underrated for me has to be the Rescuers movies. Well, I, I well really enjoyed just it. down just under. Rescuer. Just the first <laughs> rescue was meh. Well, I, I, I like I, both of them. But if I have to go overrated, I don't know. Like, there's none that I really didn't like much, but... Um... I guess I would go with Snow White. I wouldn't put it such a high pedestal. Like, I understand, like, the historical significance, yes. Uh -huh. But, like, the movie itself, like... I honestly found it really kind of boring when I watched it. It's really good. But it's really good. But I, I, mean, I like I like Snow White. Good, like, I enjoyed it when I was It's not the greatest like. ever. I mean... No. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, right. the Seven Dwarves are awesome. Yeah. yeah. Dopey, oh, is, nope. Dopey is a real G. <laughs> <laughs> Dopey is my home slice. <laughs> no, got his Yo. diamonds in his eyes. Um, no, but like Snow White is like freaking dumb as a bitch. Like, yeah. like people, like, I, like, I'm tired of people hearing, like, talking crap about Aurora. It's like, yeah, but like, you got Snow White. And like, yeah, okay, she may do more than, like, she may do more than Aurora, like, clean and stuff like that, but she's not really that bright. The way she died, I mean, like, she got a wishing apple from a random old woman out her window. Stranger danger. <laughs> Stranger danger, what is oh, that? Okay. Oh, they, 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 Same weird. crap happens. Not really. Well, she was. Well, she was a bit hypnotized and stuff. You know? Three minutes. She she was cursed. Yeah. Keep in mind. Shut up, Matt. We have three minutes left. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm done. I'll go through it. I'm YOLO. Okay. Sorry. I'm, Is too I'm late? done. Mm. I just kidding. That's all I have to say. I mean, I know it's just because with Disney, there's a lot of overrated like kind of movies. Like a lot of people. Every everybody's different. I mean. I mean, I understand that. I mean, I know. I think people say Frozen's overrated because it's in a big popularity now with all the merchandise, and then I kind of think of it as like this uh, generation's Lion King in a way, where it's all this craze right now, and it's gonna be a big, huge craze for Frozen. Plus, so, like social media doesn't help with the thousands of people yeah. singing "Let It Go." Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so. Do you want to build no man? No, I don't have any snow outside. Get out. <laughs> But, I've been requested to sing "Let It Go" for my uh, for my pet Patreon. Oh. <laughs> Give him twenty bucks, he'll sing "Let It Go." <laughs> he'll sing anything. Remember when uh, some jerk with the camera made that uh, video that had him, everyone's uh, singing uh, the Beauty and the Beast song? Jeez, yeah. Uh, in that video, he like recorded it all at Magfest, and I was uh -huh. in the group. I was in the crew. Oh yeah. 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 For me, hmm? for me, underrated. Nobody ever talks about Treasure Planet. Oh! <gasps> oh. <gasps> nobody ever talks about Treasure Planet. It was. It's such a beautiful film to look at. The animation is glorious. Okay, the thing with isn't there um, a character in that named Amelia? Am I thinking about something else? Are you thinking of Atlantis? Oh my God! I'm thinking of something else, aren't I? I'm just... I th I don't know. I'm not 100 okay, percent sure. There was somebody named Captain Amelia, in one of. No, it's, I it's, no, no, I think that is uh, treasure, treasure Planet. It is, yep, yeah, it is Treasure Planet. Yep. Treasure Planet. Yeah, that, yeah, it is. No, that's right. funny. I just find that funny. <laughs> although, yeah, she's, it was... although, unfortunately, she's a cat lady, not a bunny lady. Oh, come yes. on. <laughs> yeah, it was... Yeah, sorry. So I mean that, the literal form. <laughs> she's probably allergic to bunnies. <laughs> probably eats to... them. I don't know. Oh, snap. <laughs> it does. Oh... Yeah, just that's where I come from, and uh. That rabbit stew, though. Stop! Don't do it! I'm gonna have, I'm gonna okay. have uh, some uh, cooked rabbit for uh, Thanksgiving. Stop <laughs> it! Okay, my, my pick for underrated. 20 seconds. 20 um, seconds? The Great Mouse Detective. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I love that movie! That that's that's a great movie. Underrated? Ten, well, a lot of people are. Nine, like. eight, seven. Overrated, Overrated yeah. is Pinocchio. Six, six five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
so explain a little bit. Final thoughts of Disney Animated. Okay. I know we we kind of didn't we kind of talked a little bit too much about memories, but it's kind of good. Uh, so really, Pinocchio is overrated. Why? What are you a jackass? I no. Although that is a pretty good impression. I I look back on it now and I realize. It's, it it's uh it's got nice animation, and everything like that for its for its time. It's it's gorgeous. Um, it just is. is uh, I have yet to see Snow White again, mind you. Um, uh -huh. I I don't even think I ever saw that the, the whole way through. Matter of fact, but um, watching Pinocchio all the way through, um, I I just found it kind of stale i mean the well it is the one, one of the first the one disney most movies. interesting it was the early dark. years yeah yeah like the one of the it was dark. Was dark though oh, yeah it was yeah like yeah, the, the scene the scene where uh, uh pinocchio turns into a half donkey and and oh, yeah, jumps off the cliff was pretty scary but now Ooh, it, would, it would be considered like fa like technically like family horror yeah. Or something like that. Like, it's pretty horrifying. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, like a scary movie for kids. Yeah, like mm. something to watch on Halloween. It's a family I, picture. I find it's a family it, picture. You know, you know uh, I take the little boys and they turn them into donkeys. It's a family picture. My God, Matt, is that even your voice? Like, I'm sorry, but it's when you do those voices, picture. it just baffles me. Like, you were so talented. I swear to God. <laughs> Thanks. I'm trying to get into voice acting. That's all I think, um... Well, yeah, well, if you want to get into voice acting, you got to get into acting first. You oh, God, I've already got it covered. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I want to know how. Auditions, I... well. Auditions. Anyways, James. <laughs> okay. You are singing, me? The... the... The one, the one thing that sal that salvages Pinocchio, actually, I think, and that um, that I think has withstood the test of time in his in his own fashion, probably Figaro, the cat, oh. <laughs> because oh. kitty, and, and this is why. This is why. Pussy. Why after the after the movie Figaro was was the only character to go on and have a series of shorts based off of them. That is true. Oh my god. The Figaro and shorts. Oh. That exists. Became, yeah. He, there, there is a line of Figaro shorts. And oh my. Yeah, there was, there was a moment, like, Figaro was Minnie's cat. Yeah, she's... Oh, he, oh he I is think I remember. He is officially uh, Minnie's pet as, uh, you know, to contrast with Pluto. Oh, Which is yeah. kind of weird. Oh, that funny. is weird. It's so weird. They but, always have a girl, a cat for a girl and a dog for a boy. Like, I don't know. It's like that. They did that well, in Adventure Time, you know. I'm a, I'm a cat. I'm a cat person. I, uh, so am my I. cat. My cat passed away earlier I mean, this like year, cats. though. Aww. Well, I, like, in some, well, to explain that briefly, like in some cultures, cats are often depicted as female and stuff like that, like in Egypt yeah. or in Japan. But um, but in, in the case of Pinocchio, Figaro was I think he was more like the boy pet. The girl pet was Cleo, the fish. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So this this has been Cinema Royale's retrospective on Disney animated. Talk about our memories on that was a good episode. It was good. Uh, yeah, I had fun. It was good to it be here good. again. Everyone it's good. Oh, <laughs> no, you did. You no, sure? You were fine. You were good. Really? You okay. were good. You were fine. Yeah, you're funny. My really funny. Now get a haircut, hippie. Oh. Is that, who said hey. that? Was that for me? No, uh, that was me to Mike. Oh, oh yeah, Mike. I know, oh. I'm trying to be a hippie. Yeah, he has the more no. obvious one. I have the more obvious look, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm too used to people telling you. Give me the haircut, I'm going bald here. What are you talking about? <laughs> Matt, I'm gonna personally hunt down those people who say your hair looks weird. <laughs> Nobody hurts hair... Matt. Nobody. <laughs> His hair does look weird. He has a freaking bird nest for hair. 
I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> hey, you can't kill me. I'm uh, I'm an expert in professional wrestling and uh, Spartan mud racing. Yeah, I'm but do you do right. that to yourself? Do you do that yourself? Yes. <laughs> and battle a lot. We yes. learned a lot. We learned a lot. Uh, thanks for listening to this episode. Next time, we're going to te- check out the second part of the, our retrospective where we talk about the live-action Disney films, which should be interesting. Uh, so until next time, this has been Cinema Royale, and good night. Peace out. See you later, dudes. Bye-bye. And yes, I have now. That's the hidden Ab- Mickey of this episode. A Ab- bientôt. A I think. Adios. Hey, that's, you got it. A bientôt. Bye-bye. Oh, I love you. You speak French. It's so cute. TTFN, <laughs> pop out for now. <laughs>